Hey everyone, and welcome back for another deep dive. Always fun to dig into a new topic. Absolutely, and today we're tackling YEM. YEM. Yeah, your everyday money. Ah, uh, okay, that YEM. I've seen that floating around online. Right, it's definitely been making some buzz. But is it really going to be everyday money? Well, that's what we're here to find out. We're diving into an article from Safe Zone Lifestyle all about it. Safe Zone Lifestyle, they're pretty into their digital currencies, right? Yeah, they're all about blockchain tech and the future of finance. Okay. So they seem like a solid source for this. Makes sense. So what's the article's take on YEM? Are they buying into the hype? Well, they definitely lay out some pretty bold claims. That says. Well, first off, they address that age-old problem with alternative currencies. You mean like getting people to actually use them? Exactly. It's that classic catch-22. Yeah, merchants don't want to accept it if no one's using it, but people won't use it if they can't spend it anywhere. Right. It's a chicken and egg situation. For sure. So how does this article say we crack that nut? Well, they present these seven prerequisites for cryptocurrency to actually become everyday money. Seven? That's a pretty specific number. What are they? Things like legal recognition, which makes total sense. You want governments on board if this is going to be used widely. Yeah, I can't have a currency operating in the shadows. And stable value, too, because yeah. who wants to deal with a currency that's fluctuating like crazy? Imagine trying to buy groceries, and the price of your crypto is up 50% one day and down 30% the next. Talk about a budgeting nightmare. Yeah. The article also mentions ease of use, low fees. Basically, all the things that would make it attractive to the average person. Exactly. It has to be convenient and user-friendly if it's going to compete with traditional money. No argument there. Yeah. But honestly, how many cryptos out there really tick all those boxes? Well, that's where the article gets really interesting. Okay. I'm intrigued. Lay it on me. They claim that YEM is the only currency that actually meets all seven prerequisites. Wow. That's a bold statement. It is. They argue that it's designed to be more stable and transparent than something like Bitcoin. Hmm. Bitcoin's obviously the big name in crypto, but I can see how it might not be the most practical for everyday use. Right, exactly. Think about taxes, for example. Oh, yeah. Trying to figure out your tax liability with a super vital asset like Bitcoin. Sounds like a headache and a half. And the article specifically points to that. They say YEM aims to simplify the whole process by being more transparent and predictable. Okay. So they're saying YEM could solve some of the major pain points that come with other cryptos. That's their argument. They say it's built from the ground up to be more practical and user friendly. I like the sound of that. Yeah. But is there any substance behind these claims? How can they back this up? Well, they point to YemChain. It's their own blockchain specifically created for YEM transactions. Ah, so they've got their own dedicated tech behind it. Yeah. The idea is that YemChain ensures transparent and reliable transaction records. OK, so they've got the tech side covered. But why should a business owner even care? Why accept YEM? What's in it for them? Well, the article highlights four main benefits for merchants. Hit me with them. Customer acquisition, profit optimization, cost coverage, and workload reduction. Sounds pretty good on paper, but let's break those down a bit. Absolutely. Starting with customer acquisition, what's the argument there? Well, think about it. Suddenly you have access to a whole new group of customers, people who are already comfortable using and excited about cryptocurrencies like YEM. Okay, I see the appeal. But wouldn't that depend on YEM actually gaining some serious traction? We're not exactly swimming in crypto-savvy shoppers just yet. That's true. But the article suggests accepting YEM could actually be a marketing tool in itself. Think about offering discounts or promotions specifically for YEM purchases. Ah, I get it. Jump on the trend early and position yourself as a forward-thinking business. Exactly. It's a way to generate buzz and attract those early adopters. And there's another intriguing idea they throw out there. Oh. Using YEM vouchers to connect online and offline shopping. Okay, now that sounds interesting. How would that work? Imagine earning YEM by shopping online and then redeeming those vouchers for discounts at your favorite local stores. So it's like a bridge between e-commerce and brick-and-mortar stores using YEM as the common thread. Exactly. And it could be a way for local businesses to fight back against the dominance of online giants. Yeah. Bring some of that business back to their communities. Now, that's a clever strategy. I now, can see how that would be appealing to both businesses and consumers. 
it plays into Yem's whole ambition to be more than just a digital currency. It wants to be a whole economic ecosystem. All right, so we've got customer acquisition covered. Yeah. What about this profit optimization idea? Now, this is where things get interesting. The article suggests that as the Yem marketplace grows, the value of Yem itself could increase. So businesses that hold on to their Yem earnings could potentially see those earnings go up in value over time. That's the theory. It's like a built-in investment strategy. It's a bold claim, but is there anything concrete to support this? Well, they give a hypothetical example. Imagine a merchant earns 100,000 Yem. Okay. Now, if the value of Yem goes up from say $0.10 to 15 cents, and that merchant suddenly has an extra $5,000 in profit just from the appreciation. Okay, I'm listening, but isn't this all very speculative? Crypto markets are notoriously volatile. You're absolutely right. We need to approach these claims with a healthy dose of skepticism. There's no guarantee Yem's value will go up as predicted. So don't go betting the farm on Yem just yet. Definitely not. But even if it reaches a fraction of the predicted value, it could still be a nice bonus for early adopters. It's something to consider especially for businesses that are already open to exploring new possibilities with digital currencies. Absolutely. It's all about keeping an open mind. All right, so we've got customer acquisition and potential profit optimization. What about the other two benefits, cost coverage and workload reduction? Well, those are more focused on the practical side of things. Yeah. Let's face it, most businesses still operate primarily in the world of traditional currencies. Right. So how do you integrate YEM without disrupting your whole operation? That's the million dollar question. Yeah. And the article acknowledges that challenge. So what do they suggest? Starting small, offering a select range of goods or services priced in YEM alongside your regular payment options. Ah, so like a YEM corner in your store. Yeah. Or maybe offering bonus services that can be purchased with YEM. Exactly. It allows you to dip your toes into the YEM ecosystem without having to revamp your entire pricing structure. It's a low-risk way to experiment and see how YEM fits into your business model. And if it takes off, you're already ahead of the curve. Precisely. And on top of that, there are the inherent advantages of any digital payment system. No more handling cash. No more clunky card readers. Yeah. Just instant secure transactions. And let's be honest... Who hasn't had a frustrating experience with a card reader malfunctioning at the worst possible moment? We've all been there. Digital currencies like YEM offer a potential solution to those headaches, make transactions smoother and more efficient. So even if YEM doesn't become the next global currency overnight, there are still tangible benefits for businesses willing to explore its potential. I think that's a key takeaway. It's about staying ahead of the curve, embracing innovation, and maybe even having a little fun with it along the way. Well said. And that's what makes this whole topic so intriguing. YEM is just one example of how digital currencies are pushing the boundaries of what's possible in finance. It's an exciting time to be following these developments, for sure. We've covered a lot of ground here, from YEM's ambitious goals to the practical considerations for businesses. But before we get too carried away, let's take a step back and look at the bigger picture. What could a world with YEM as everyday money actually look like? That's a question we'll be diving into in the next part of our deep dive, so stay tuned. Welcome back. So picking up where we left off, I think it's worth digging a little deeper into some of the specific ways YEM could impact businesses. Yeah, we touched on some pretty interesting concepts. Like using YEM for marketing. Yeah. And even that whole idea of linking online and offline shopping experiences. Yeah, that voucher system was pretty wild. What stood out to you? That voucher idea was really interesting. Imagine a world where you could bridge the gap between e-commerce and those brick and mortar stores. Using YEM as that common thread? Exactly. It'd be like, almost like a loyalty program. But on steroids? Right. You shop online, earn YEM, and then use those earnings for discounts at local shops. It's a win-win. Totally. And for local businesses trying to compete with the online giants, that could be huge. It gives people a reason to shop both online and locally. Creates a more dynamic shopping experience. For sure. Yeah. So yeah, big fan of that idea. What about you? I like it. It's clever. But what about this whole profit optimization thing? The article made some pretty bold claims about YEM as an investment for businesses. Yeah, it's definitely an enticing idea. But how realistic is it, really? Well, the article argues that as the YEM marketplace expands, the value of YEM itself could increase. Leading to big profits for merchants who hold on to their YEM earnings. Right, but it's a big if, isn't it? I mean, cryptocurrency markets are famous for being volatile. 
How can anyone predict that yen will actually go up in value? You're not wrong. It's important to be cautious. No investment is without risk, especially with crypto. So it's more about being open to the possibility. Exactly. Don't go putting all your eggs in one basket. But hey, even if it goes up a little, that's still a potential benefit. Especially for early adopters. Okay. But even if the value does go up, there's still the practical challenge of actually using YEM in a business that mostly deals with regular money. Right. Good point. But the article addresses that too. They do? Yeah. They suggest starting small. Maybe having a dedicated section of your store for YEM purchases. Like a YEM corner. Exactly. That way you can experiment without changing your whole pricing structure. Low risk way to test the waters. See how it works for you and your customers. Right. And if it takes off, you're already ahead of the game. I like that. They also mentioned upselling add-ons or bonus services with YEM. Yeah. That's another smart strategy. Incentivizes people to use YEM without disrupting your core business. It's all about finding those creative ways to integrate it. And on top of all that, don't forget the general perks of digital payments. Oh, yeah. No more messing with cash. No more <laughs> card reader malfunctions. <laughs> Tell me about it. I got stuck at the grocery store the other day with a broken card reader. It was a nightmare. Oof. I hate when that happens. Digital that... currencies can make that a thing of the past. Seriously. So even if YEM doesn't take over the world overnight, there are still some solid reasons to consider it. Absolutely. It's about being forward thinking, embracing new possibilities, staying ahead of the curve. It's like YEM is riding this wave of the future of payments. Even if we don't know exactly what that future holds. But by embracing it, businesses can show they're innovative, that they're paying attention to what customers want. Exactly. It's about more than just accepting a new currency. It's about adopting a mindset of innovation, of being open to change. So even if YEM doesn't become the dominant global currency, there are still compelling reasons to give it a shot. Definitely. It's about having options, exploring new possibilities, and staying ahead of the curve in this crazy, fast-paced world. Well said. But now let's zoom out a bit. Think about the bigger picture. What could happen if a currency like YEM really did gain widespread adoption? What would that world look like? That's a big question. Yeah. And one we're going to tackle in the final part of our deep dive. Okay. We're back and ready to wrap up our YEM deep dive. We've talked about the features, the potential benefits for businesses, even how to get started using it. But now for the big question, what could a world where YEM is truly everyday money actually look like? It's a fascinating question, isn't it? The article hints at something bigger than just a new way to pay for stuff. Oh, like what? It suggests a potential paradigm shift, whole new way of thinking about value and exchange. Okay, now you've got me intrigued. Break that down for me. What's so revolutionary about YEM's vision? Well, think about traditional currencies, dollars, euros, they're controlled by governments and central banks, right? Right. But cryptocurrencies, they're all about decentralization, mm. taking that control away from those institutions and giving it to the people. So it's about individuals having more control over their own finances. Exactly. And that idea really resonates with a lot of people, people who are maybe disillusioned with the traditional financial systems. I can see that. But let's get practical for a second. How would this decentralized vision actually work in our daily lives? Well, think about it. Paying for your coffee buying groceries, shopping online, all with a simple scan of your phone using YEM. Okay, I can see the appeal of that. What else? Imagine sending money to family overseas, instantly, and with almost no fees. No more ridiculous international transfer charges. Sign me up. Or to think about microtransactions, paying tiny amounts to access online content, tipping your favorite creators, donating to charities directly without any middlemen. So it's not just about replacing the dollar or the euro. It's about opening up all these new possibilities for how we interact with money and value. Exactly. YEM is just a tool. And like any tool, its impact depends on how it's used. Okay, we've covered the potential benefits, this vision of a decentralized future. But what about the challenges? Surely there are some hurdles to overcome. Of course. No system is perfect. Yeah. I think the biggest challenge for any alternative currency is adoption. Right. Getting people to actually use it. It's that chicken and egg problem we talked about. Merchants need customers using YEM, but customers need places to spend it. It's a tough cycle to break. What about regulation? Governments are still figuring out how to deal with cryptocurrencies in general. That's another big one. Yeah. Regulatory clarity is essential for any financial system to really take off. And then there's security. We hear about crypto hacks all the time. How can people be sure their YEM is safe? All valid concerns. Yeah. There's definitely a lot of potential with YEM, but also a lot of unknowns. 
So what's the takeaway for our listeners? What should they be thinking about after this deep dive? I think the key takeaway is this. YEM and this whole movement towards decentralized finance represents a huge shift in how we think about money. It's a challenge to the established way of doing things. And whether it succeeds or not, it's forcing us to reconsider the systems we rely on. It's like we're standing at a crossroads. And YEM is just one path we could choose to take. And it's definitely an exciting time to be watching all of this unfold. Whether YEM becomes everyday money is still up in the air. But it's a fascinating case study. A glimpse into the future of currency and the power of technology. So for you, our listener, what does all of this mean? Well, that's the million dollar question. We've explored the potential, the challenges, the vision. Now it's your turn. Do your own research. Think critically and decide for yourself if YEM could truly become your everyday money. Remember, knowledge is power. The more you know, the better equipped you'll be to navigate all of this and make the decisions that are right for you. And that's what the deep dive is all about. We're not here to tell you what to think, but to give you the information and tools to form your own opinions. So stay curious, keep exploring, and who knows, maybe one day you'll be telling your friends about this wild podcast episode back when Yem was just starting to make waves. Thanks for joining us on this journey into the world of Yem. Until next time, keep diving deep.